What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we'll be checking out a title called Iron World. This game has itself billed as the Hotline Miami inspired open world post-apocalyptic RPG of your dreams. And so we're going to dive on in. I've spent about an hour with the game, which I think is enough time to formulate my thoughts on the first push of this early access title, which comes out on the 14th. And hopefully my thoughts and also a little bit of gameplay here for about 35 minutes will help you decide whether or not this is an early access that you wanted to throw your money at. If after watching this you wanted to investigate the game further, I've always got a link for you down in the description. And then on top of that, you can find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream where I am frequently live on most given days of the week. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump on in. I've got a save that's about an hour on into the game. I've got like a little notepad here where I've written down my thoughts for when I get to the end of the video and I close out. And I'm talking about the feedback that I think the game needs to focus on in order to be a recommendation. Uh, so hopefully somebody will timestamp that for you just in case you want the condensed thoughts and not the full video. All right, so here we are. We are attacking a raider base that is on a highway right now. And you may notice that I'm inside my car. The car is a focal point of the early access for right now. This game definitely is trying to be something Road Warrior or Mad Max inspired, where the car is kind of an integral part of the journey. The game comes in two different difficulty modes. I'm playing on the high difficulty mode right now, which is called Survival. Uh, it's a mode where you can actually starve and you need to find enough water to get by. But the game is divided up into two portions. There are are car sections and there are on foot sections and we can actually actively swap in between those inside of a map too however our character is much squishier than our car and so what I like to do in some of these car related missions is I like to cruise around and I like to kill these guys real fast and just sort of clear out everybody along the periphery of the map before I go in on foot to clear out the final couple stragglers there's a guy right there let's go ahead and back it on up I don't think you want to catch this car, dog. Oh, that's a grenade. Let's get away from it. As you can see, the game does have little details. Like, for example, if you run over a blood puddle, uh, your car will then track blood all over the place. The same thing goes for footprints. This game is speckled with little tiny bits of detail like that as you play your way on through it. These enemies we're killing, they do give us XP. We are leveling up while we do this. However, as far as I can tell, there doesn't really seem to be like an on-screen XP meter or anything anything else like that that lets us know how close we are in our progression to moving up to the next phase of our character's development but hopefully that'll be in there someday that guy's down uh, these guys are capable of dropping any of their equipment uh, so on survival mode they drop a lot less loot but that being said, if you see an enemy equipped with something and you kill them, my experience has been so far that they can drop that thing so that you can loot it and then equip it for yourself. This game does have a full array of loot that you can collect for your character and all of that loot does show up on the character's sprite. In fact, uh, actually kind of a surprising level of detail. There are a lot of shirts, there are a lot of guns, there are a lot of helmets in this game. And all of those things show up and look like what they actually are. Like, if I put an Ushaka on my character, it looks like an Ushaka. If I put a trucker cap on him, it looks like a trucker cap. They've gone through and actually done that. I think we've cleared the map out enough to where I'm not worried about any threats. Let's go ahead and hold down the Alt key and see if there's anything that we can loot. This looks to be a garage. It's got a lot of scrap and car parts inside of it. Your car is its own character as well. Just like my character has all these perks that we can level up into. There's the XP meter I was talking about. I'd prefer for it to be on screen somewhere, though. Like, maybe just a white line along the bottom that fills in yellow, kind of vampire survivor style as you level up. Doesn't have to be anything too impressive in the UI, but I would like to be able to see it. Uh, we've got some large caliber ammo over here. We've got some drugs and some water. At workbenches, you can craft. This game does have a crafting system. It's not hugely extensive for right now, but you can cook the food that you're finding on the map and make it into shawarma if that's the kind of thing that you're into. Uh, you can create cans of food. I'll probably go with the shawarmas for right now because they heal me for a bunch of HP and they fill up my meters. We can make med kits and things of that nature. Just in case that's kind of up your alley, we can manufacture gasoline, we can make different ammunition types, but for now that's about it. I don't think we can manufacture guns or weapons or do any kind of modding or anything else like that, although those are systems that I would like to see. 
Uh, my first observation when I started playing this game on foot is that the camera starts out really cramped like this. You can zoom it out a little bit, but I would like to be able to zoom this out a little tiny bit further. I think the camera in this game is definitely cramped by comparison to where it should be in order to make the game feel good. I think where the car's camera is at, like if I get in the car, that would be just right for on foot, and then like I think about 25 to 40 percent further for car driving uh, would make both of those feel good, because as you can see, our character can barely see across the street right now, and since we have functioning eyeballs, I would like to be able to see across the street. Got that guy right there. At the moment, I'm kind of running a build where I have a riot shield, and it, I, I have a chance, I have like a 40 or 50 percent chance to block bullets. It drains my stamina in the top left-hand corner while I'm holding my shield out. I don't think I have any guns that I'm super excited about at the moment. I do have a lot of guns and weapons laying around, but there hasn't really been a use for them so far. There is a sort button, which is a nice thing to have in here, but I haven't been able to scrap anything, and I haven't really been able to break things down into constituent parts yet, and I don't know if that's going to be an intended or planned feature of the game. Your car does have a trunk. You can store stuff inside of it. I've been throwing just like one version of each weapon inside of here and then discarding everything else just so like at the end of the game I can take a look at all of the weapons and all the varieties that I've seen. I will say there does seem to be a lot of weapons in the game. Uh, there's single and dual wielded versions, akimbo versions of a lot of the guns. There are two handed weapons, shotguns, rifles. I haven't had any drop in this playthrough uh, due to the fact that I'm playing on survival mode which does put a hard throttling on the amount of loot you can actually find around. But when I was previously playing through the game, the last time they put a demo out, I was playing on normal difficulty, and it seemed like a lot of guns of a lot of different varieties drop. I do think they could spice that up a little bit by throwing in a little bit of Diablo influence right there. Uh, allowing certain guns to have modifiers on them that allow them to have like a deeper mag well or that cause the camera to zoom out a little bit further or they allow you to, you know, take reduced damage or they increase the amount of XP you get. You know, be creative with it. Have, have fun with the idea. That's ultimately what video games are supposed to be all about. I don't know if I've gotten everybody. There's a big pop-up that shows up on screen that's like, area clear when you've killed everybody, but this is a fairly consistent problem that I've had with this game. There's a lot of maps that I don't get that pop up, but I drive around for a long time, or I walk around for a long time trying to figure out, you know, what enemy is left so that I can get the area clear bonus, and I just never find that last enemy. I don't even know if that last enemy exists in some of these cases. It's been very difficult to derive. This is an area where I think the game could definitely use a mini-map, or it could definitely use some kind of system in play when there's low enemies around. I, I think a mini-map is honestly the best solution here, just because a mini-map would be nice and allow you to figure out where you've been and where you haven't been without, you know, showing you directly where the enemy's at. But still, uh, some kind of system that lets you deterministically figure out where the last enemy is at would be nice because this is a consistent issue that I've run into while playing the game. I'm going to eat some food, drink some water. Uh, there are little interactions you'll find in the game world, like the ability to fill up bottles from a well or the ability to cook food in certain locations. Kind of nice little interactions right there, but they are sort of few and far between. Let's go ahead and move up, and I think I'm just going to get out of here. I think we, like, got everybody. I do find the driving controls. Oh, there's a guy right there. Hold on. I must have missed this entire house. And apparently there's an extra dog rattling around, too. I'm going to try and wipe out that turd. Is that everybody? Well, I haven't been here, so... Got some meds over here. We got some fuel. We got some shotgun shells and pills. We got a crafting workbench and a fridge. There's a leather vest over there, but I already have a whole bunch of the leather jackets. This game does have a stealth system, but given how limited the camera is, like how tight the camera is, the enemy does not seem to suffer from that same tightness of camera. And so when I was playing around with the stealth system for sort of like Hotline Miami stealth clears, I found that the enemy oftentimes, even if I was completely naked with no armor affecting my noise rating, they would see me long before I could see them. So I just kind of gave up on it in favor of slaughtering everybody with fully automatic weapons bumping. It's just kind of what I did. Uh, there's a gas station over there. On this right here, this is how fast the game scrolls, both when you, like, edge scroll it 
and when you WASD scroll it. This is so fast as to be unfunctional, and this is the kind of little detail that really needs to get smoothed out in the early access. Uh, if you click, it will latch back onto your car, and it will edge scroll at like a normal speed. But using WAST and using the edge scrolling inside this map to like look around is functionally completely pointless and can't be done uh, due to the speed at which it scrolls. And if you take a look inside the options, I have not found anything that makes that better. In fact, the options aside from key binding are fairly limited. There's not much that you can do with it. Uh, in addition, the mouse sensitivity is entirely too high. I've bottomed it out completely, and it's still pretty wispy and pretty whippy. Oh, God. That guy's got shotguns. Please don't shotgun me. I need to zoom out my camera, too. Every time I go into a map, it zooms my camera back in. And playing with the camera that zoomed in is basically impossible. Go ahead and wipe that guy out right there and take him down. I like the car levels a lot more than I like the on-foot levels. I actually feel like the driving and fighting in this game feels a lot better than the on-foot combat for some reason. And it's sort of hard to get to the bottom of. Like, they, so they, they sort of invoke the idea that this game is based on Hotline Miami... But if you get down to, like, the core of why Hotline Miami works, it's because Hotline Miami, at its core, is a game that is focused on methodicism. It's a game where you look at the layout of a building, and then you sort of construct this very precise, elegant dance of button presses and movement that gets you through that level while wiping out all the enemies and getting you where you want to go. Uh, this game doesn't really have that. This is a game where you basically tank all the damage straight to your face, go in guns blazing, and wipe everything out. Uh, I haven't seen any real reason to use melee so far. I haven't seen any reason to use stealth uh, so far. All of the levels where stealth might be advised due to the fact that, like, the enemy is great in number and can probably take me just with sheer force and volume of rounds fired. Uh, those tend to be the levels where I can just use my car, and so I just kind of, like, run them all over. And like, eh, whatever, and I go about my merry day. Uh, I haven't really had to plan or think about my, my angle of attack on any level so far that I've noticed. <sighs> use a med kit real fast to get my health back. I haven't picked up, dude, I want an automatic weapon so badly that it makes my teeth hurt. Uh, we do have enough scrap to where I think we can upgrade the car. That'll lower our speed, but give us more durability. We've also got, like, a sturdier frame for the car. It looks like over here we can reduce our fuel consumption. It looks like I can add a workbench to my trunk. That might not be a bad idea. A water condenser. We've got an external tank that allows us to store more fuel and makes us more efficient. We could get a new gun. That might be kind of fun. The twin-linked minigun seems to fire a lot faster than the dual heavy machine guns. And so I'd be, I'd be tempted, but it's going to take us most of our scrap to do that. It looks like we can also get a hybrid engine. The hybrid engine will allow us to just throw fuel, like, lets us throw food into the engine in order to get it to burn. Or we can do an improved engine, which makes our car faster, but it exclusively only runs off of gasoline. I think I'll probably go for a new gun. Let's go for the dual miniguns. Yeah, there we go. And as you can see, our car now has dual miniguns on it. Sweet. Uh, let's get out of here. What is that? It's got like a little guy with a mohawk. What is that? I want to kill that guy. There seems to be a town nearby. There are probably supplies to be found inside. Do you wish to enter? No, I've been co I've been seduced by whatever this point is over here that has a guy with a mohawk. I want to I've never seen this icon before. I want to know what it is. Travel to the raider camp. Sure, why not? Nothing bad ever happens in raider camps. Is this a car level or is this a level where I have to do everything? Oh, it's a car level. Hell yeah. All right, car level. Let's do the Oh, there's a lot of you over here. Okay. All right, fair enough. We we took a little bit of a hit right there. Just wipe them out real quick. Anybody else want the smoke? I got plenty of ammo for all of you if you want the smoke. I'm going to get rid of your turrets over here too, though. Don't mind me. Uh, it looks like they've got some kind of, like, palisade set up over here. Can I just kind of, like, sneaky, like, peek a -boo, like, look up over the edge of their wall over here? I don't know what's hitting me right now. I'm just going to return fire because I don't have the same camera view that the AI has. 
There we go. Just wipe out as many of these turrets and as many of the outside stragglers as I possibly can. Hello, boys. How are you feeling right now? Are you feeling okay? You seem to have taken a rather awful case of bullet-titus to the face. I'm gonna need more ammo pretty soon, though. Yep, we out of ammo. All right, let's pull off to the corner of the map. We'll loot some of these bodies. If we can find a workshop, we can actually manufacture a whole bunch more stuff. Oh, he threw a grenade. That's not good. Hitbox being a little wispy right there, but we dropped him. I would like to see a little bit more hit feedback when the player gets hit. I mean, I think there's a number of adjustments here they can make to make the game kind of fall more in line with Hotline Miami. But anyways, uh, when enemies get shot, they should, like, stagger. They're being hit by a high-caliber round. Like, the enemies don't really seem to react to being shot, and that makes them feel a little bit stiff, which then, when compared to the variety of kind of, like, death animations and fatalities and, like, bad things that happen to the enemy after, like, even down to the bullet holes. Look, like, the game knows from the sprite if you shot them in the front, what armor they're wearing. If you shot them in the back, there are, like, these little rays of detail in this game, and I, I feel like it would be dishonest to say that there's not. There definitely are, like, these little areas where the detail is nice. Uh, we can't extend the camera out by holding down the space bar. I think that's a feature that should work without you having to hold down the space bar. Like, if I take my mouse and I just go up like this, it should scroll out to kind of like a maximal distance that's based on, like, the equipment and the modifiers and the perks that I've taken. How do I get in here? A revolver and some bullets. Ah, right here is how I get to the inside of here. Good. Well, I'm going to collect your ammo. Oh, look, dude. They've got kabajis. I've got 13 bottles that I can fill up inside this well. But it looks like there's kind of like a maximum amount that you can actually fill up from the well. Plastics right there. Oh, okay. We're being shot at by something that hurts. <sighs> Let's go ahead and get a med kit on us real quick. We also need to eat a shawarma to get our health back up. And we need to drink some water to get our water meter back up. It is a turret. Now, when you're aiming in this mode, something feels weird about it. It's off and on, but in this game, sometimes it feels like there's, like, selective mouse acceleration or something. Or some kind of auto-aim. Or something going on with your mouse. It's not always there, but it is definitely sometimes there, and you will feel it when it happens. Like, every now and again when there's an enemy around and you're, like, moving and you're, like, aiming in the distance, there'll be, like, this odd feeling. Like, it's either trying to snap to an enemy or, like, the mouse feels weird. Almost like there's smoothing or acceleration or something put on it. That needs to go. I don't know what it is, but it comes up probably once or twice per map while I'm moving quickly and fighting with enemies, and it makes the whole experience feel off and I can't exactly tell you what it is because it only happens sometimes when doing a certain combination of like moving and aiming in the distance while holding down space or something but it does happen and it is there and hopefully somebody that's better at figuring out exactly what that is will be able to get to the bottom of it uh, but it has bothered me thus far I have not been a fan of it uh, so why can't I craft the cooked meat right there it looks like I have all the stuff Restores health 4,000, heals for that. I need four of those. I have those. Maybe it's not implemented yet. Maybe it's like an early access thing. I don't know, but it's not letting me craft that right there. Or that. Or really anything, in all honesty, that I have the materials for. Is my inventory full or something? That must be what it is. My inventory's full. Okay, well then, eat the crackers. That's what it is. The inventory's full right there. Good to know. Now we will eat the crackers. And there hasn't been any money or, like, vendoring or selling anything yet from what I've seen so far. I'm hoping that will be a feature at some point. Uh, my guess is that they've got, like, the core basic sandbox gameplay in here for the open world. But from what I've seen so far, it seems like they haven't got the narrative in. They haven't got, like, the storyline in. They haven't got the interconnected systems in. It, it feels like they've got the bare basic gameplay going, but they haven't got all the underpinning RPG stuff in it yet that makes it an RPG at this phase of... What kind of gun is that? Is that a revolver? What is that? A heavy revolver. I don't know if I've seen the heavy revolver yet. Oh, yeah, dude, that thing's dope. It's like a Chiapa Rhino. I want that. Yeah, put that on me. Reload it real quick. Ooh, it's got... 
It's got a spinning cylinder sound when I reload it. That's pretty fun. Oh, I needed to make more ammo. Where was that workbench at? That was the other thing that I needed to work on. Hold on, I need to take my car back around to somewhere where I can hang out. And I forgot to make ammo for my car gun. Ammo for my car gun. And drives in the wasteland. There we go. That's a solid stack of ammo right there. Our current gun is a lot thirstier on this machine, this machina, than the previous gun I had mounted on it. Uh, we'll go ahead and put in the trunk. Put in the trunk. I don't think anything else in the game that I've seen so far uses the heavy ammo. Dude, I need to find like an assault rifle or something that's automatic for when I'm on foot. That's what I need very badly right now. Uh, but either way, I've solved a problem that I was dealing with. Let's get out of here. I think we've taken care of this raider base. I leave you, raider base. It's time for me to go elsewhere. There's a cave over there, and there's another raider base over there. It's kind of hard to scout, though, without actively driving the car, just due to the fact that the edge scroll is so aggressively fast. Let's go down to this raider camp and see what we can do here. It is letting me drive again, so I'm guessing what we're going to be able to do here is actually going to be pretty dope. Uh, get back in the car. We're being shot. Hey, there we go. That's a nice... Is that guy trying to fisticuffs my car? What a dork. Who thought that was a good idea? Uh, we are losing some HP right now on our car. Hitboxes are being a little tiny bit weird. There we go. Couple more bad guys down. Oh, there's more of you over there, huh? All right. Well, down you go. Have fun taking a little bullet-inspired nap. We are going through a lot of ammunition right now, though, killing all these guys. You're down. Maybe let me shoot over to there. I'm going to back up down this way. A few more down. Another 100 rounds or so. That's a grenade. I'm willing to bet a grenade probably hurts this vehicle a lot more than the enemy's bullets do. We're at about half durability for our car right now. So we need to figure out whether or not I should disembark and go on foot from here. How odd. We're like not hitting. There we go. Perfect. Some, from some angles, it feels like the hitboxes need work. Like I feel like the bullets like go through things sometimes, but maybe I'm just not looking at it close enough. Is that everybody? Have we taken care of business here? I think that must be about everybody, and I need to refuel the car anyways. Pop out, and we will throw some gas in there. Car's kind of thirsty. That got us up to 93, though, so I think it'll hold for a little bit. Let's go ahead and loot our junk hoard over here and see what we can get our hands on. So there's, like, apparently some blackberries growing there. We've got a little bit of meat and food. Scrap is good. Scrap is real good. I'll take scrap. We got shotgun shells and bullets over here. No new guns, unfortunately. Maybe, I'm, I'm thinking maybe playing on the highest difficulty for the purposes of this video was a bad idea, but I felt like I was just waltzing through on the uh, normal difficulty. Well, there's, there's dual heavy revolvers right there, which is pretty sexy. Grab the rest of that ammo. Workbench is good. Probably fry up some meat right there, maybe. Yeah, let's go ahead and eat that. We will drink that. Drink that. I'll probably chuck, like, some of the drugs. Just so I can have a little more space. We've got two steaks right there. That's good. Shawarma. All right, we got, like, a little bit of food around here. I'll put the steaks on the hot bowl. Ooh, flour. Nice. Could definitely use that. We've got a normal revolver over there. 
Nothing that's got me too excited. I would like to see supplementary systems added to the game to bolster up the RPG mechanics. Like, the ability to go through and, like, disassemble these junk cars and whatnot uh, with, like, a little mini-game, you know, where you've got to do, like, a little quick-time event or something that slows down or speeds up based on your mechanics level. Lock doors that you either need to blow up with a grenade or you need to, you know, do something about them with lockpicking or whatever else. I will go, let's go with extra loot in containers. Sure, why not? I don't think we got a pop-up saying that we killed everything. But I feel like everything's dead. A salvaging system would be nice to see where I could take some of this extra crappy loot inside my inventory that I have no use for and break it down into car fixing scrap or like, uh, you know, car modifying scrap I think would also be good. What are you, a pistol ammo? Oh, there's a guy right there. Where'd you come from? I guess I ain't been here. All right. Yep, definitely ain't been here because there's a whole lot of goodies laying around. Grab that right there. That wasn't the last guy, huh? I really feel like deep down inside my stummy bits that that was the last guy. That guy's leg came off. That sort of implies that at some point, so like I've noticed that sometimes enemies' arms fly off and sometimes their legs fly off. It implies that the game is making some kind of internal check for what body part is being hit, which makes me kind of wonder if they're gonna put in like a Tarkov style, like you gotta fix your broken knee, like you can get shot in the chest and then you gotta heal your chest, or you can get shot in the hand and then you gotta heal your hand individually by comparison to the rest of your body parts, but it's kind of hard to say from what they've got out here. It's clear to me that this is a very early, early access, and now that we're about 28, 29 minutes in, I should probably give you my closing thoughts about the game, but that's my first thought, is that this game is kind of in a very alpha state right now. They've got the core basic stuff on in there, but the extra accompaniment and also the stuff that hooks together the accompaniment doesn't quite seem to be there. And whether or not this would be a recommend from me comes down to whether or not there is the intent for that stuff to be there. So in my opinion, personally, I don't think the game is quite there yet. I, like I said a couple times during this video, this feels like the blueprint of an idea. Like it's definitely the earlier end of early access. The core gameplay is there, but there's like kind of duct tape and like sort of just these indicators that there's more stuff to come and it needs to be on in there before I would give a recommendation. Uh, so the things that I like about the game, uh, the car combat actually, the car combat is a ray of light on this one. The car feels slidey and it feels heavy and it feels good and it feels like the guns have impact and they have weight. Uh, the car modding, everything having to do with the car, I'm a fan of. That part of the game is done well. The art style of the game is saturated and good looking and definitely could use some more animation to it. It's a little bit stiff, but the core art style itself is done well. The soundtrack is also really good. I do think that the things that need to change here, I'm just gonna give my feedback so that going into their development of the early access, they know what would make this a recommendation for me. Uh, the animation is a little bit clunky and undercooked. I felt like it needed a little bit more detail, or the game's art style should have been more pixel arty if they wanted to use so many herky-jerky kind of single-frame animations. Uh, one of those two options, I, I obviously they're not going to reconvert the entire art style over, but I do think things like the melee felt very twitchy and kind of one-framey and stiff to me, and it could have used a little bit more rotation, a little bit more extension, it could have been a little bit nicer. Uh, I mentioned earlier there's something wrong with the mouse. The game has some kind of smoothing, some kind of acceleration, some kind of auto-targeting or auto-latching that occasionally feels like it pops in and pops out that in the heat of the moment can make the combat feel really weird and wonky when it happens. When it doesn't happen, the game's a tiny bit stiff, but it functions fine. When it does happen, it's like the windows are getting broken and rattling and falling in. It just really disrupts the gameplay process.
Uh, the edge scrolling, as I mentioned, is too fast on the world map to the point of not being usable. There needs to either be an option to adjust it, or it needs to be slowed down hugely. I would be in favor of the options menu having a slider that takes care of that. I didn't notice any story thus far. Uh, the game says it's an RPG, but like an RPG needs like a story, it needs decisions, and it needs branching paths and things that matter, and like the player has to have agency on the game world. Like, being an RPG doesn't just mean that the game has, like, a level-up system. That alone does not an RPG make. You gotta have all the other bits and pieces of an RPG in there, but hopefully that comes with early access. I also mentioned that it'd be nice to have a mini-map that allows you to slowly clear the fog of war on a map to figure out where you've been or where you haven't been. I would also like it when you're down to, like, one or two guys left if the game just pinged that for you and told you where they're at, because consistently, over and over and over again, I had trouble or had to take a lot of time tracking down the one missing guy on the map. Uh, with the camera, the camera should always be default zoomed out as far as it can possibly be. Instead, it does the opposite in this game. It's zoomed in as far as can be when you transition in between on foot and in the car. It always resumes back on in. It should always start zoomed out, and I think the zoomed out portion of the game should allow you to go about a little, like about 40% further in both on foot and in car. Being able to zoom out a little bit further would be nice. The camera did feel pretty cramped to me for most of the game. It's better if you zoomed all the way out, but a little bit further would have been better. Uh, I think that aiming should not, so aiming beyond the edge of the screen should not require you to hold down the space bar. It should just do that, and the distance you can see should be limited or expanded by the headgear you have on. So if I'm wearing like an Alton or like a full head covering, I should not be able to scroll quite as far out, and it would make sense that I wouldn't have as good a vision. But if I have something like a baseball cap on that's shielding my eyes from the sun, I should be allowed to see further. And you shouldn't really have to hold down a key in order to do that, although I wouldn't mind holding down the key quite so much if the default zoom of the game was a little bit further out to begin with. I did sort of feel like the game could use an extra layer of depth to bring it make map clearing a little bit more interesting. So I like the car sections, but the foot sections. It'd be cool if there was like a attachable cover and there was like a dodge roll and you could slide in between cover and whatnot. Just really dial up that immersiveness of being one guy in the sand trying to take down endless armies of raiders in sort of a tactical intelligent way, I guess. I always felt like I was just tanking and spanking everything. And I felt like Hotline Miami was a little bit more ornate and dressed up than that. Like, I distinctly remember, like, plotting out how I was going to get a level done in Hotline Miami after whiffing a couple times and getting laid out. You started really thinking about it, obsessing, like, I'm going to knock that guy into a door, then I'm going to fry his face with a frying pan. You know, like, you started going full John Wick mode trying to figure out how you wanted to clear this section. And so, I, I guess in closing, this one felt a little bit light on content, and it felt like it's kind of almost like a prologue instead of the first patch of early access. Hopefully they hit the ground running fast, hopefully they can get some more layers of depth added on into the progression and the combat style, and they can get the on-foot sections feeling as good as the car sections felt to me. Get some more crafting in there, get lots more gear in there, get lots of quests and side quests and, you know, things like that to really flesh out this universe, and then I'll have a check back in on it. For right now, I'd say leave this one on stove for a little while longer. Uh, I will see you all later. Thank you for stopping on in. My name is Splattercat. I sit through the pile to find what is worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today it was Iron World. Tomorrow it will be something else. See you later, folks.